Uh, right, OK, Sunday marks eight years of Jurgen Klopp at the helm for Liverpool. How do you reflect on his tenure so far? Joe Gomez, the only player in the squad who arrived before Jurgen Klopp. I think, look, since winning, the, he, he joining, he won the Champions League, they've won the Premier League, the FA Cup, the League Cup, the Community Shield, the Super Cup, the Club World Cup, they've won everything. That wasn't on the agenda just before he arrived. Well, they've, I think also, they've also lost two Champions League finals, so it could have been three, and they've also lost to Man City on the league last day of the season by a point. Yes, so it's been quite a successful period over that time. And just before he arrived, they were on the verge. I mean, they were close to winning the Premier League a couple of years before under Brendan Rodgers, but he's taken them on. How much credit does he deserve for the way he's transformed Liverpool? Unbelievable credit. I mean, it's been a phenomenal job. Um, I think the way he's brought the fans on board with him has been really clever as well. I think it's been a brilliant kind of relationship that he's had with the supporters of course that comes from success on the pitch and the way they play but he's completely ingratiated himself into the football club and the way Liverpool people are he understands it he gets it and maybe the fact he'd been at dormant helped because that's a very you know well supported club and got great passion I think he's he's done a, he's done an amazing job in not only bringing Liverpool back to being competitive and successful but also with the budget he's done it on and I don't think it gets talked about enough. I don't think it's... People expect Liverpool to be competitive because of the dominance of years gone by. But actually, with the powerhouses they've been competing against, it makes the job even more phenomenal. It really does. And, and one of the things he's also done is he's raised the standard and pushed Pep Guardiola to be better yeah. than even he was initially. I think if you speak to Pep, he'll say one of the great things about... The last few years, maybe not last year, but not last year, certainly no. the year, the two years before that, was the fact that Liverpool pushed Three years them all the way. They really tested Manchester City, who had to be almost perfect to mm. beat them. Yeah, I think that's fair, and I guess Danny would say that the last season maybe was a, a culmination of the fact that they they can't compete on the same financial footing as Manchester City, and therefore having been pretty relentless the season before and actually going the distance in all four competitions. Maybe that lack of ability to regenerate the squad, that lack of spending power. Do you know what? I want, do you know what? Them. Just on that, just sorry, just on that. I think it was actually probably a bit more of a um, um, recruitment and management error in the thinking because they nearly run, won the quadruple and had that wonderful season where they nearly got all of it. Um, well, he opened and admitted he he made a mistake. He said yeah. he was told by everybody that they needed to uh, refresh the midfield and he didn't do it. No, because and you kind said, of feel loyal to the group that have done so good. And yeah, so maybe it was a bit of that as well. Yeah. I wanted to come on here and wind Danny up, didn't I, about Jurgen Klopp. Actually, when you look at his list of achievements and you look at where... But when you do a bit of research, well, you, you realise he's you, quite good. You look at where Liverpool have been for most of my lifetime. You know, Liverpool weren't, when I was growing up in the early 90s, they, they weren't a club who were challenging for silverware they came close a couple of times didn't they Rafa Benito I think well, they won it, they came close. Last time they won it at the beginning of the night so yeah. you have to appreciate how good Jürgen Klopp is don't yeah you? I think you I do to, but do, you pay tri- do you want to pay Begrudging. tribute to him Listen, I'm not going to pay tribute I mean, you, like, you like massive, him as a character massive drop off last season didn't make the top four <laughs> Uh, scored a lot fewer goals, conceded a lot more goals. But <laughs> Manchester overall, Manchester United overall, better than Manchester United over the period. Yeah, overall, Jürgen, he, he's was, done a was Sir Alex job. Ferguson right to get the ump when Jurgen Klopp joined because he he thought he could be a next Manchester United manager, didn't he? At one stage. Well, listen, if we can re- if, if we can rewrite history, then uh, I think I would probably accept that. So, yeah, as much as I want to get stuck into Danny, I think he, he has done a brilliant job. And as you say, what he's done is he's kept Pep Guardiola honest at times when some of the the, the usual suspects have, have underperformed. I actually respect. think he's also in a position now where, I mean, it's looking really positive. It's a good start to the season. The new lads look like... Can't defend, though. But did, did, he, he did say, actually, I spoke to him a couple of weeks ago, and he was saying that, look, I don't know how far this team can go because I'm still rebuilding it as we're going yeah. along here. But the fact that they've had such a positive start to the season 17 points from 8 games 3 points off the top as it stands at this stage how many does goals that, conceded does it give you the optimism well 10 away from home uh, 7 away from home sorry and uh, 2 at home so 9 goals conceded mm. what too many Tottenham have conceded 8 yeah but Tottenham aren't going to win the Premier League are they okay. no, presumably that's Liverpool's aspiration for this season no, it's not. It's not too many. It's not like a startling amount, though, is it? That they give away too many chances to, they, to they, get to where they want to be. They've had a mixed start, is what you could say. Defense. Some games they've in certain parts of games they've looked a bit all over the place, then re, you yeah. know, recompose themselves. <laughs> I think that's fair. Um, but I think, like you just said, Klopp's learning about this group, um, and I think what I was going to say, the point I started at, is that 
if he was to be able to get some success with this group over the next year or two, that would put him even in a different bracket. Because, you know, great managers of years gone by is about reinventing teams. Mm -hmm. When you talk about Fergie, when you talk about Wenger, you know that reinvention of a side. You've had success. How can you go again? And I think this is a real, not a test, but it's, it's a real opportunity for him to be put himself in an elite position. You know, he, he is already talked about as one of the greatest Liverpool managers ever, which is incredible considering the success. When you think of Shanks, Paisley, Fagan, Kenny even, he's in that conversation. Well, he, there's a reason for that, because uh, earlier in the year, back in September, he became the uh, Liverpool manager to reach 900 goals in the fewest number of games, doing so in 440 matches, 55 fewer than Bill Shankly himself. A lot of people saying, well, he has, it's not as if he hasn't spent anything. He broke the world record transfer for a goalkeeper and for a centre back. Nunez costs more than Haaland. Not exactly Poundland, is it? Uh, Paul in York. Well, However, little... you look at the comparison, they spent £765 million on players since his arrival, compared to Chelsea, £1.73 billion, City, £1.2 billion, uh, United, £1.8 billion, and uh, Arsenal, a billion, Spurs, £800 million. So well, I've got, spent I've, less I mean, than I've lots. got the net spend as well, which is, is very relevant to me. People talk about mm. gross spending, and I get that, but Net is, net is more crucial and Liverpool are six it's 345 million well, they're, six on, they're six on player spend as well so it's the same yeah, yeah so about 50 a season and you've got Chelsea United Arsenal City and Spurs haven't you um, so I I think it's remarkable what he's done on a budget what Pep's done is phenomenal as well for different reasons you know that identity that amazing football they play that ability to improve players which Jurgen does as well but City have become a blueprint for everybody else to and try the, and play like the other difference is that City can afford to spend 50 million quid on Calvin Phillips and clearly he's not repaying that transfer fee and it doesn't really matter I think when Liverpool spend 60 million pounds on a player 50, 60 million pounds on a player they have to come in and make a contribution well they, they, they did they, I mean it's more important but Kaiser didn't but I know what you I mean. was going to say because there important. has been a couple of moments over the last couple of years where it hasn't gone perfectly recruitment wise they've, they, they've sort of seemed to have corrected that once again yeah and I, I think that's normal I think it can't always go well you're going to have a spell where you have a bad summer or a bad window and a couple of pl the players don't work but generally I think that Liverpool's business has been pretty good, pretty admirable. And actually, a lot of the players who've turned up at Liverpool over the years who have had question mark over them when they've arrived, even players like Mane, even Salah to a degree. Oh, yeah, because Salah hadn't made it at Chelsea, they, but he did go away to Italy and do very yeah, well. Could he they, reintegrate into the Premier League? But I League? think Jürgen, Jürgen could definitely be um, credited for the improvement of a lot of players that have come through Liverpool over the last six, seven years. What about Darwin Nunez? They obviously bought him last summer and he had a, an up and down season, I think. I mean, his XG was great, but yeah. his finishing wasn't. This season, has he sort of started to see... Has he been more clinical this year? Is he? Have you seen better I, I from him? I haven't checked the numbers, Sam, but I, I really like what I see. I, I, we've, I've been calling for a while now to give him a, a really good run of games because any young striker who's trying to build his confidence and his um, standing at a football club, needs a good run of games. Mm. He will score goals. He must be a nightmare to play against. Going to miss a few as well, though, isn't he? He is, yeah. But, but would he, if he plays all the time, would he get you 20 goals? I think he would. I think he will. I think he looks capable. He's quick, good in the air, game. Huge as well. Huge. Look, Liverpool have got good options in attacking areas. When you play the best teams, him down the middle with Diaz and Salah right and left, is the way I'd be playing, not Gapco. And I like Gapco, but he's not... I always look at it like this. If you're a centre-half for Man City, for Man U, for Tottenham, for Arsenal, and you see the Liverpool team sheet, and Gapco's playing, or Nunez playing. Who worries you more? Nunez. It's interesting, because last season, if you look at him, he played 29 games, 1,700 minutes, nine goals, three assists. His XG was 14.37. He actually scored a lot less than that. He underperformed on it by five, five and a half goals. This I think year, he hit the more than any other player. He did. He hit the woodwork quite a lot. Uh, this year, he's played 303 minutes in the Premier League, which isn't very Nothing. much. I mean, it's basically three games so far. He's got three goals, two assists. He's having five shots per 90, mm. which is very high and his XG is 3.73 he's underperforming that by 0.73 he's got three goals at this point so he's much much better into it's a small sample well, size not, we'll the XG can hide a multitude of sins but what I'm looking at on my eye is a player who looks a real handful who keeps getting chances mm. and if in the big games you need someone I, I don't think Centre halves are going to enjoy playing against him. Okay let's speak to the David who's a Liverpool fan and he joins us to talk about VAR hello 
Hello, Sam. How are you doing, mate? You all right? I'm not too bad. I'm not too bad. Good to speak to you. What do you want to say, pal? Uh, just about the VAR. Oh, yeah? I can, I can sort of understand now why Howard Wedd didn't come straight out after the game, after watching it last night. Go on, why? So let's get this, so let's get this straight. The referee de- makes a decision depending on what type of game it is. So basically, if it's a big game, he, he might make a different decision than if it's not an important game. That's what I read into what he said. He's well, basically, Michael Oliver was thinking, oh, it's a, it's a top of the table sort of clash. It's 11 v 11. Yeah, and then he's decided, oh no, well oh, because it's that, I won't send Kovacevic off. Did that, oh, no, he did, he, did, he did say he did say that that might have been in his mind, but he did say well, that it was the that. wrong decision, didn't he? He did say that if he looks back again, Michael Oliver, he will be he will be disappointed and think he should have sent him off. But that's like say, that's like saying if the referee in the Liverpool game seen that it was onside, he realised it was onside, he'd give it onside. It's a bit late now, isn't it? There's no consistency stand from them. Well, it's interesting because yesterday, um, the man sitting to my right here, Alex Crook, suggested that the referee was wrong for sending off a player in a in a uh, northeast derby because it was a northeast derby. You've got to keep eleven on the pitch, and that's the problem, isn't it? Some people want it to to, to take those big games into co- consideration. Some people don't. Yeah, but I guess the reason why they've selected Michael Oliver for that game is because of his experience, so he should have been able to to rise above that. And, and they've accepted that. They've I would rather the referees get wrong decisions trying to keep 11 on the pitch than the other the way round. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.